Welcome to the Target Center for the State Class 4A Girls Basketball Tournament, a quarterfinal matchup between the number two seed, the Hopkins Royals, and the Forest Lake Rangers. I am Jay Wilcox, along with Ryan Iverson, and Hopkins just kind of humming along. Ryan, back to a familiar spot, 13th or 12th time in the, the tournament. They're looking to get back into that championship game. They've lost the last two title games, so they're they're hungry for a victory, not only here today, but uh, by Saturday as well. Well, I think unfamiliar territory that they're not the number one seed, right? I think a lot of people around the state feel when Paige Beckers is healthy, they're the best team in the state of Minnesota. We might have a chance to find that out, hopefully it's Saturday, but I'll tell you what, Forest Lake, you just never count it out. That's why they call it March Madness. They're here for a reason. They've won a lot of big games. They got some great balance, some good depth, and anything can happen, but I'm excited to see Hopkins at full strength, and I expect them to play really well today. Yeah, Forest Lake knows they come in as the underdog. They're 19 and 10 this year. First time in the tournament since 2001, and they are coached by an old friend of ours, a former great at Park Center, Jen Wagner. She was Jen Hoffner back in that at that time. Had a great college career and has done a nice job with their program. They're excited to be here. Well, and I think, you know, teams and players, they, they reflect the personality of their coach. And they got a great coach. He was a phenomenal player, tough one. She was a winner, and it's obviously rubbed off on her players. So I don't think they're happy just showing up and, hey, we're, we're happy to be here. We're here. Let's try to win this game. Let's slow it down. Let's take care of the basketball, you know, everyone, what everyone's trying to do against Hopkins. And if they can do that, they, they got players. They're here for a reason. And I, I think she She's excited to be here, and I know their team is as well. Let's talk about key players to look at in today's game. There's real, really not a superstar in this Rangers team, but Maddie Rice is a player that can fill it up a little bit, a great shooter for them. Well, averaging over 11 points a game. They got good balance, right? Not no one that's averaging, you know, 25 or 30 a game, but she's a great shooter. She's a good ball handler. She's going to be a key, important person for Forest Lake taking care of the basketball. You just can't turn the ball over when you're playing Hopkins. And if they gamble and they go back door, she's going to get some open looks. And it's always tricky to see if you can shoot well here at the target center. First time being here, obviously, for, for them. You know, and Hopkins been here in previous years, but both of them are new this year. But she's a great shooter. If she can get some open looks early, I think that could be really important for Forest Lake. And for Hopkins, no question who their leader is. Paige Beckers, I think, is going to go down as one of the best girls players in Minnesota history. Just a sophomore now, but this week named Star Tribune Metro Player of the Year. I, I'll go a step further. I, she's the best girls basketball player I've ever seen in Minnesota. And we've seen some great ones at Hopkins, too. Nia Holly, and you got uh, Coffee that played there. So it's a phenomenal talent. I just think she's the most complete player. She could put up 40 if she wanted to, but she averages almost seven assists per game, over five rebounds a game. Great defensively, she's a team player. I just think she's phenomenal. I love watching her play, and I think when she's healthy and she's playing with this Hopkins team, I think they're the best team in the state. All right, Forest Lake hoping to hang in this one and maybe pull an upset. Hopkins looking to take care of business and get back into the semifinals. It's the Rangers and the Royals, and it comes your way next on CCX. Okay, so we drowned the fire, yep. stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. And welcome back here as Forest Lake and Hopkins get set to do battle in the 4A quarterfinals here on CCX. It'll be our last girls basketball telecast of the year as the starters being introduced to the crowd here. And uh, take a look at, first of all, our bracket. As you see, Eastview winning easily over Prior Lake. Lakeville North, heartbreaker for Maple Grove as they fall by two in overtime. And then uh, this one then followed up by Roseville, the team that we saw beat Park Center last week, taking on Creighton Durham Hall, the number three seed in our last quarterfinal game. And then the semis and finals wrapping up on Saturday night, the last uh, game of the tournament at 8 o'clock Saturday night. Here's a look at the starters for Jen Wagner and the Rangers from Forest Lake. Abigail Gronewig and Abby Leach up front. 
Both of them are juniors, uh, Lindsey Johnson, Grace Van Bergen, and Maddie Rice. So they've got one senior starter and, and three juniors in their uh, in their bunch. So definitely a team that you know has a possibility of getting back here next year. And Hopkins also has some youth to their lineup as well. They got a couple of key seniors certainly, but Beckers, Amaya Battle, and Raina Suggs in the backcourt. Angie Hammond, Delayla Chicolas up front for the Royals. And certainly pace of the game and just score, you know, Forest Lake would like to keep this game to a much lower score. Hopkins would just as soon get up and down and, and put some points on the board. Although they they kind of have a capability of playing other styles as well, too. They're a pretty good half-court team as well. Well, a couple of things that stand out. Hopkins averaging just over 78 points. Forest Lake just over 40, 57 points. The other thing is the margin of victory on average on the year for Hopkins, 25.6. So they they don't win close games. They just blow teams out, and they just have so much firepower. There's a look at Jen Wagner in her 13th season at Forest Lake, and like you alluded to in the pregame, just a great winner, a really good basketball player, and just that, that culture and that mentality. She's done a great job here at Forest Lake. Makes me feel a little old. I remember her stepping yeah. in the lineup as a sophomore at Park Center, knocking down jump shots. And there's Brian Cosgriff. What a, what a career he's had with the Royals. Six titles and uh, in the state tournament, more often than not, 19th season at the helm. And, and uh, they, you know, very hungry, their players, yeah. to come back. Not just to do well in the tournament, but try and win it after uh, you know losing him in a talk on the title game two years ago and losing to Elk River in the title game last year. Well, I think that's key, right? They they're not coming off three straight state championships. They haven't won it in a while, and they feel like it's rightfully it belongs to them. And they got the talent to do it. There's some very good teams in this state tournament, and you got to take it game by game. And obviously, you don't want to overlook Forest Lake. We've seen big upsets in high school basketball tournaments, and. Hopkins going to do everything they can to not have one here today. Gronowig and Hammond jumping it up, and it's controlled by Hopkins. Royals get the first possession, a drive, and a hoop for Battle. Well, that was quick. <laughs> Amaya Battle just got the tip, and no one stopped the ball. She was able just to get all the way to the rim. I thought hit a difficult floating shot, too. Ball knocked away on the drive there as Lindsey Johnson tried to attack. Her mom played in the state tournament for Forest Lake. You see Hopkins came with pressure right away yep. to try and get Forest Lake. You know, a great turnover was yes, but also just speed up the overall pace of the game. Yeah, but out of that, I like Forest Lake didn't, they didn't sit back against the pressure. They looked to attack, and that's what you gotta do. You gotta play with confidence, and you gotta attack Hopkins, attack their pressure. To the top of the key, the three is good for Abby Leach, and Forest Lake takes the three to two lead. Well, and she shot quite a few of them on the year, about 33%. So she's a very capable three-point shooter and a great start for Forest Lake. Becker's the crossover. Jumper bounces around and drops for the Royals. Does she have nice touch or what? And that's a, such a tough shot coming off that high screen and roll. Here's a great look. Nice drive. Draw the defense in. Kick it out. Big-time shot by Abby Leach. <clears throat> Paige Beckers, that's contested. She gets good elevation on her jump shot and gets a good roll as well. Well, it looks like that Forest Leaf basket. They're not counting it as a three, it appears, or are they? That's what they're discussing right now. They are pushing it back to a two. So that's what the uh, official's discussion was. There's Beckers that pull up at the free throw line. Yeah, beautiful looking shot. We'll get another look at that. There's a nice throw ahead deep, nice catch. I like how they threw over the top. That's a great way to handle that pressure. And a nice catch too by Van Bergen there. And I thought she should have shot it, at least gotten two free throws out of it. Said it's gonna be a foul on the floor. Rice driving it down the baseline and then throws it away. Was the ball tipped? The official says Hopkins did get a piece of that. Yeah, let's see Here's another see. look. It's that right foot that comes forward. Oh, mm, I think she was behind the line yep. there. It's very close though, but they did not it is ultimately decided it was a two. Yeah, Maddie Rice had a nice move along the baseline there. I thought she should have shot that. Instead, try to make a pass. You gotta take shots when you get them against Hopkins. Johnson cut off, brings it back around to Van Bergen. Rice keeping the dribble alive off the glass, no, and rebounded there by Shakolas. 
Colas trying to go all the way, and it's an offensive oh. foul. Wipe it out. Well, great charge taken by Abby Leach, but I think Chicolas is such a fun player to watch, isn't she, Jay? She grabs the rebound, goes coast to coast, in and out. Look at this Euro step, and that's what you got to do. Great job. And here's another throw over the top against the pressure. I like what Forest Lake and how they're attacking it. Gronoweg leaving it off for Van Bergen for the layup for the Rangers. And, ooh, and a blocking call there. <laughs> Coach Wagner wanted a push off on Beckers and might have had a bit of an argument there, but Lindsey Johnson instead will be called for the foul. You see how Forest Lake throwing the ball deep, right? Why, why try to go against all that pressure when you can just throw it long? Here's Hammond going to the hole. That is an offensive foul on Hammond. She turns strong with the shoulder. And offensive foul against the Royals. Well, Abby Leach drawing her second offensive foul. Watch the arm right here, that left arm, and you can see that. Anytime you lower that and extend it, that's easy for the referees to call. Nice job by Leach, beating her to the spot. Rice picks up her dribble at half court and is quickly tied up. Nicholas and Beckers are both there. It'll stay with Forest Lake, but obviously next one goes to Hopkins. Yeah, when you got two girls on you like that, you can't pick your dribble up. You got to either try to get around it or find the open man. But you don't want to pick your dribble up where Hopkins can trap you. They're just too good and they're relentless. And Bergen giving it back to Rice now. Her nice pass. pass down to the corner. And then it's a steal by Beckers as the cut was a little off on the timing. Here's Beckers, had it blocked from behind, and it will be Hopkins' ball. Great effort, Forest Lake sprinting back on defense. Hopkins gets so many points offensively on transition. Nice job getting back, making Hopkins have to score, which they do easily. You know, read an interesting stat, Jay. Hopkins scores more points out of their out-of-bounds plays than any other team Probably because no one else keeps that stat, but still, they have some great execution underneath out of bounds plays, and there was a great example. And that'll be a turnover on the Rangers that pass up too tall there for Leach, and then she took a hard fall to the court as well. Lexi Holtman, number 11, comes into the lineup here for Forest Lake. So a six to four lead for Hopkins. Forest Lake doing some good things in the opening minutes and hanging right in so far anyway. Pass for Beckers was knocked away, but Beckers gets it right back. Beckers, a left-handed pass over to Tacolas. Well, you can kind of see that setup right there. Nice job by Beckers to not lose that ball, and then just she's got that great vision. She's a great scorer, but I think she's an even better playmaker. Traveling call here on Holtman. And so Forest Lake has turned it over now like three of the last yep. four times they've had it. And, you know, sometimes you... It, it's a cumulative thing, I think, a little bit the pressure, too. You might say, okay, we handled it pretty well these first three, few times, but that doesn't mean it's going to stop and, nope. and not wear you down. Well, that time, too, I thought Holtman, she had an open jump shot. She's a capable shooter. And yep. Suggs traveled there, too, dragged the pivot yep. foot. And you, when you're playing Hopkins, you've got to take your opportunities. If you get an open mid-range shot, even if it's a little quick, you've got to take it. Bad pass there, Hammond deflects it, and now Beckers over to Hammond, and a foul committed by Gronewig there for Forest Lake. And again, another turnover in that pressure, beautiful pass, and Hammond went up strong. It looked like a pretty good contest right there. Either way, nice job by Forest Lake. Force Hopkins, don't give up easy layups, force them to make some free throws. So Hammond to the stripe here to try and increase the 8-4 Hopkins lead. First one's perfect. She's got an excellent looking shot too, doesn't she? For how tall she is too, she's got that soft touch. Very good free throw shooter. Yeah, Hammond, those look really good, although statistically of the starters, she's uh, definitely the lowest percentage at about 56%. Sure doesn't look like no. it there. 10 to four, Hopkins lead. Rice behind her back, didn't really want to do that, but, and now 
Oh, they grant the timeout. That was about to be a turnover. Co Coach Cosgriff is upset, and I think he's right. That ball had already been thrown by the time they granted that timeout. So the Rangers get a little bit of a break right there, I think. You see, she almost traveled, and it was about to be 10 seconds, too, and then she throws it out. Going to be out of bounds. Oh, I, I, no, that's... <laughs> You can't grant that timeout when the ball's been thrown already. Because technically you have to have possession of the ball to, to get a timeout. I think coach was calling the timeout before it was released and the referee a little slow on, and that's why no, he and, and I'm sure you're right, right, but I still feel like, yeah. you know, the, he didn't raise his hand or blow the whistle until it was already nearly out of bounds. The one thing that's kind of different is, I mean, Forest Lake, you know Hopkins plays this 1-2-1-1. One, they look like they haven't, they're not quite prepared for it. Like they don't know how to attack it. Well, and, it, and part of it too is the coach said, you know, they tried to s simulate it in practice, but it's hard to, because you don't have the athletes that the Royals do. There's Beckers for a layup. And a beautiful left hand. And again, another turnover out of this pressure. You've got to be able to handle the ball. And you got to slow down. You've got to find the opening. you got a ball fake. You know Hopkins is playing those passing lanes. Again, Paige with those long arms gets the tip. And she's gone. Nice look ahead. And if there's anyone that knows how to finish, it's Paige Beckers. Yeah, and a good on-target pass by yep. Suggs, too. Yep. That wasn't really that easy of a thread-the-needle play, but nice you got pass. it right to her. Little step-back yep. jumper here. That is good for three for Gronewig. So Forest Lake, a much-needed basket yep. there. And Gronewig, oh, three for 20 on the year from three-point line. She didn't look like it right there. She looked like she was a very good shooter and knocks it down. Suggs blows by the defender and it floats around and drops. You know, that's the thing about Hopkins. They just keep coming at you with talent. That pass just barely yeah. getting there and the layup is good by Maya Tanberg who's coming off the bench for the Rangers and she quickly gets herself yep. on the scoreboard. It's 14-9. Well, again, thrown over the top, able to handle that pressure. They can get good looks if they can handle the initial pressure. Beckers to battle, no good, and the Rangers clear the board this time. And a look up court with it for Rice. Rice, dangerous cross-court yeah. pass that barely gets there. Rice giving it over to Holtman out high. Holtman driving between defenders, oh. offensive foul, no bucket. Great shot, but the charge taken, and Holtman will be called for the personal. Uh, it was a great move. And she had a nice Euro step, split the, the two defenders, and I couldn't tell, was that Hammond that came over and took that charge? Chikolas, no, yeah. did. You know, that's, that's what great teams do defensively. You got to beat your person, but you also got to beat help. And if you're happy to get by both of them, well, here's a third defender ready to take a charge on you. So great layered defense that time by Hopkins, even though it was a beautiful move by Holtman. Kayla Adams, 22, is in for Hopkins, as is... Jade Presley, number 23. Baseline drive for Beckers. That one off the side of the glass. Was trying to draw contact, but not enough to draw the foul there. Holtman giving it over to Gronaway. Driving it to the baseline and swings it around. Starting to look like Forest Lake was gonna fall way behind, but a couple of buckets for them and they're back to within five. Gronaweg turning, and that's an air ball. Beckers with the rebound for Hopkins. Beckers to the middle, kicks it over. And that one too strong from Adams. Gronaweg looking to drive it the other way, blocking foul there. She was bracing for contact there, and uh, back just a little bit late was yeah. battle. Oh, I like what Gronaweg did. Watch her go into the contact here knowing there's no possible way that could be a, a, a charge. So she got the contact, able to get the two free throws. Battle, a nice job sprinting down there, trying to get position. But that call is usually, when, when both players are equal and ground like that, it's usually going to go against the de defense. Another thing that could be important for Forest Lake here, you have to take advantage when you get to the line against a team like Hopkins. That's their first free throw. And, uh, Gronowick not able to get it to drop. Hammond and Suggs coming back in for the Royals. Chakolas and Beckers will get a little breather. Box 
second free throw is good. So Forest Lake into double figures now, 14 to 10 ball game. And see subbing in for the Rangers is Kenzie Stumney, who is coming back off an ACL injury late in the summer. She hasn't played much this year, but she's verbally committed to Montana State. They've tried to work her back in late in the year a little bit. Presley kicking it over. Here's Suggs for three, and it is good. Well, she's made the most three-pointers on the Hopkins team this year, and that shot looks nothing but bottom of the net. Very pure. And they just they have so many weapons. Yeah, and a player like uh, Suggs, you know you're a good player when, I mean, honestly, to me, she'd still be effective if she never shot a three, yep. and she'd be still effective if, you know, if all she did was drive every time, she would still be one yep. of their better players. Yep. Going to get a foul call here against the Royals. I believe it's Hammond. Yep, nice job, too, that time by Presley, kind of drawing her defender in. And that's the other thing about Hopkins is they're very unselfish, right? I mean, they got a lot of scores. But they, they, they'll give up a good shot for a great shot. And that time, Presley was a great example of that. Probably could have forced a little five, six-foot jumper and instead saw Raina Suggs wide open for three. An official's timeout. I think Van Bergen may have lost a contact lens, the way it looks there, the way she's either that or maybe got banged in the nose a little bit. So Rice will come back in. Yeah, it looks like, looks like maybe a contact lens issue popped out. Uh, hopefully it doesn't, you know, get stuck in her eye like John Jacobson of CCX had happened to him a couple days ago where he had to have the eye doctor fish it out for him. That does not sound fun. No. Rice forced out high near the timeline. Nice pass. Open look there, but the shot is short from Lindsey Johnson. Here come the Royals. Suggs watching it over her shoulder, lays it in. Well, and that's what they do. Just like the Hopkins boys teams, they take missed shots and rebounds, and they turn it into points so quick. You cannot watch. When your teammate shoots, you got to already start sprinting back. You've got to stop their transition. And another offensive foul as Lexi Holtman tried to go to the hoop and was called for her second charge. Yeah, watch Paige Becker's number one. Look at her step in there. Definitely had her feet set. And that's the second time we've seen Forrest Lake doing a nice job getting penetration. But you got to go through one, two, and sometimes a third defender. And that's where you got to come to a jump stop or you draw the defense in. That's when you got to kick it out. I thought the, the play before that was a beautiful job by Maddie Rice driving, finding her teammate wide open for a shot. Other thing too is Hopkins makes them start their offense out so high yep. that it's really hard to drive all the way to yep. the hoop from way out beyond the top of the key like that. That allows you know just that extra time for that defender to get there. Suggs with the floater won't go. Gronewig the rebound here for the Rangers. They're down by nine. Leach looking inside. Gronewig turns and shoots. Left it short but got her own rebound and then was fouled by Beckers. I like how Gronwig is playing. She's, she's playing confident, took a good shot there, followed it up, and she's been aggressive. And that's how you got to play when you play against Hopkins. You got to be aggressive. You can't be intimidated or timid against them. And that pass well off target as Johnson made a cut and Stemney threw it behind her and over her head. You know, that's one of the issues when you come back after a long injury. It's just timing, right? Just the, the game speed, especially against a team like Hopkins when you probably haven't seen much of that anyways, but it's it's a not an easy task to come back. Suggs into the lane, then they swing it quickly around to the corner. That one's well off target, but Forest Lake, sometimes those air balls are harder yep. to rebound and, and it caught Gronewig off guard. And, wasn't able to make the catch, so Hopkins will get the basketball back. Well, even though that was an air ball by, by Presley, that was beautiful offense. The ball started on the right side. A couple of quick swing passes, you get a wide open look. Again, another example of their unselfishness. Suggs, a quick cut, scores, and a foul. As Rice bumped her, 
Just a little bit late on the cut. That one didn't look like anything fancy. I mean, we'd love to credit Coach Cosgriff with a, a great play, but I think it was more just Suggs reading things and making yep. a nice cut. Well, and it's the old adage of keep, you know, stay between your man and the basket at all times. You know, that's the thing with when you're guarding someone, force them to throw it out over the top. You'll give that up. You just, those are the kind of plays you can't give up. And of course, when you got Beckers, who's got great vision to begin with, she's going to see that. She's going to make you pay. And Suggs with a nice bucket in a three point play. Big sequence there for the Royals. The lead grows to a dozen now, 22 to 10. Johnson might have shuffled him. No basket. Yep, the pass was low. Yep. And that kind of threw her off a little bit. He ended up making a nice shot, but I think it was a correct call. It was a quick little one two shuffle here, right there. Yep. yep. But I like how she was trying to come to a jump stop there. That, that was the right play. And to your point, just shuffled a little bit. Beckers had it knocked away on the way up and then contact, but yep. no charger block there. Just the ball yep. knocked out of bounds by Forest Lake as yep. you get a look. Good right. hands right there, good yep. hands. And then I love again, Abby Leach trying to get ready to take a charge. I think a pretty good no call there yep. though too. It really yep. didn't have any impact. The ball had already been knocked out. Yep. Beckers will swing it, then she gets the return. Mm, that one looked like Ooh. pretty good amount of contact there. <laughs> I always think too, when you're a phenomenal player, referees can either work for you or against you. Some of them will work for you. They'll give you the benefit of the doubt. And some of them, nice pass, good shot attempt. Some of them will go out of their way. They're not going to give you calls that they might give to other players. Oh, wow. Suggs oh. to the hoop, no good, but was fouled as they tried to take the charge and were just late getting there here. And we will see right here. Foul call going against Leach. That was close. And a timeout granted to Hopkins right here. Ryan, did you experience that when you were at Eden Prairie? Were you, there were some officials that were looking to say, you know what, we're not giving you that, Mr. Iverson. Yeah, well, I, I'd say 80% of the time I got the benefit of the doubt. I went to the free throw line almost 14 times a game my senior year. And part of that, too, is because I always had a really outgoing personality with the referees. But I've seen, you know, you, you look at like Brad Davison the last couple of years, some games he would get every call. And then there's a couple of games where you could almost see referees, you almost felt like we're singling him out and they weren't gonna give him anything. I see it in the fourth grade level. My son Max is averaging about 30 points and there's some games he doesn't get a call to save his life, you know? And it, it's just funny when you see great players, some referees really go out of their way to help them and some go out of their way to say like, you're better than that, you should have made it anyways. And, I don't think that's right either. I think it should just be called, whether you're a great player or, or a, a bad player, a foul is a foul. And I wish that extended to the NBA. It drives me no. nuts when you say, well, he's a rookie. He's not going to get that call. Yeah. And uh, LeBron James, he'll yeah. get that call. Yeah. No, they're all basketball players on the court at the same time. I couldn't agree more. Suggs free throw is good. You know, that, the other fascinating thing, Jay, about... Hopkins is, if if you were watching this game, you, you'd feel like, yeah, Hopkins is winning, but they're not playing that great, right? Then you look at the score, it's already 24 to 10. You know, that's, what, that's what's so great about them. And when they play great, you know, they can be up by 40 sometimes. Nice and move. Johnson a drive, but she was fouled on the way in. And I believe this one's gonna go against Adams. We'll see though. Yep, Adams on the reach in. Well, and again, I, you attack, you put Hopkins. Hopkins is aggressive enough. They will follow you as evidence now by, are they in the bonus already? Yeah, that'll be yeah. team foul seven, yep. So nice job, and heads up for eight and a half minutes now if you're Forest Lake, you can get to the free throw line and get a chance to get a breather, set your defense, and of course, get a couple of good looks from the free throw line. Free throw good there for Lindsey Johnson, her first point. And, I'm, and Hopkins head right there, I think they're saying, you know, we don't mind players going for steals, but first thing first, you have to move your feet and yep. be in position. Yep. And that wasn't really the case on that one. Second free throw also good. So Lindsey Johnson knocks down a pair here for the Rangers. It's 24-12, oh, and a near steal there. Jay, they almost took you out there. Yeah, I was hey. worried, worried for you. I was about to jump in front of you, but I was watching the monitor, so I, I didn't see it. Well, as I came back <laughs> into the arena, I had to avoid being run over by the Hopkins girls as they were running back to the locker yeah. room, too. I told Coach Kaze, I just about had to take a charge there. 
little stop and pop, oh, wow. oh, and a nice shot by Battle. And, and uh, Battle was singled out. She's just an eighth grader, and she yeah. did a nice job when Beckers was injured, really kind of yeah. taking over the, the uh, responsibility to bring the ball up court as a, their point guard. And, uh, boy, she's going to be a very good she one is. for the Royals, too. You can already tell with her length, too, as an eighth grader and a point guard, and that was as smooth as you could get. And there's yeah. a travel. She's got good pressure defense. But, I mean, how about that for an eighth grader in the state tournament? Just goes hard, and then I feel like so many kids now, Jay, it's either a three-pointer or a layup. That time recognizing maybe not all the way to the rim, but taking that little pull-up job, that's a skill, and she buried it. And that's that's the thing, something that's been a little bit interesting or unique with this Hopkins program is they don't rely all that much on threes compared to a lot of teams. I mean, yes, they make some, yes, they take some, but uh, it isn't, you know, they don't completely rely on that. And I think that helps you to not have... You know, just a real More off night as much, right? yeah. Yep. Yeah, we see great, you know, jump shooting teams. And you remember the Timberwolves for years were jump shooting teams. That doesn't always carry. You're going to have off shooting nights, but if you're attacking the rim and getting layups, you're going to make you're going to make the majority of your layups. That shot was blocked. Suggs now coming out of there with it for the Royals. Cuts to the basket, but then her shot blocked. There's a lot of traffic around. Yep. Rangers, oh, and Becker's the steal. She has Suggs ahead of the field. Oh, oh and a great block. Oh. Lindsey Johnson out of nowhere. Looked like that was going to be an easy two, and she swats that one. That was just great effort. I thought Raina Suggs slowed down a little bit here, too. I think she thought maybe she was all by herself, but that was excellent effort. You know, the other attribute about Paige Becker is that doesn't get probably a lot of talk is how long her arms are defensively. She gets, I mean, already today, I've had six or seven deflections. And part of that's anticipation, but a lot of that is just having quick hands and long arms. Oh, a great oh. spin move to Colas for the layup. That's what we call the spin cycle, Jay. I just love how she plays. She moves so well. She's got great footwork. And she's normally being guarded by taller and maybe a little step slower than her guards, and she's got great speed. Beautiful move. Suggs got a piece of that pass, but it'll stay with Forest Lake. Watch this one. Woo! And what I love, she didn't spin away from the basket. She kept her momentum going to the basket. That's what we call a quick spin, and it's very hard to defend, especially when you got when you got strength like that. I also yeah. like, you know, she did a good job of not traveling there or not even making it look like a yep. travel because a lot of officials call are a little yep. quick to yep. call a, a, yep. on a spin. But what she kept the dribble going so that she yep. wasn't holding the ball as she spun. Yeah, that was a beautiful move. You know, that's the other thing, too, when you're, when you're trying to defend Hopkins. Who do you take away? You put two girls on Paige Beckers? Well, there's Raina Suggs getting wide open shots. You know, if you, you guard her, there's, you know, Battle getting a nice, easy look. Not her, it's Chikolas gets a look. And then when you can have your center leading the fast break. Chikolas to the hoop is called for the travel. I thought that was just a Euro step there. And sometimes it looks like a travel, but you see Coach Cosgrove telling her pass the ball. That was a good example of what Hopkins normally does. Yeah, I could maybe score, but I could maybe give a great pass and get a great shot for a teammate. Logan Anderson, 34 in there for the Rangers. She turned it over the last time and this time as well. The pass was tipped by Hopkins, but then it hit Rice's fingers as well. That was pretty close to us. You could see it was a double tip double there. Yep. Suggs will come back in the lineup here for Hopkins. 28 to 12 yep. Royals. And you can see that discussion. He's telling her right now, let's get our teammates involved. That was a great drive, but give it up. I, I love that too. He's never satisfied with his team. He's always coaching, always teaching. And listen, when you got a lot of talent, and the best attribute is how unselfish they are. I mean, that's that's truly awesome. Into Beckers, and she scores. And it kind of starts with, even though she's a sophomore, she's you know a very unselfish player and wanting to make her team better. Here's Rice on the drive. And there's a steal. Yeah, those long arms. Beckers will go all the way for the left-hand layup. You know, Beckers is 5'11", but her arms make her more like 6'1", 6'2", I think. You can tell she's just, on defense, she's a, a step ahead of what the offense is trying to do. Anticipates really well. 
Rice to the free throw line and then has to dish it off. His battle just did a good job staying with her. Oh, Gronowig splits the D and scores. Good step through. I, I, I'll tell you what, Gronowig's been the one player for Forest Lake who has not been intimidated, really attacking. It's gotten a couple of nice baskets and some good looks. Adams. Somebody reached in and grabbed the ball. Let's see, they're going to confer, and it's going to be last touch by Forest Lake. See how she finished with that ball way out in front, too? A lot of players, they when they go for the layup, the ball will be back, and that's easy to maybe to, to get a deflection. And, that. of course, the first sophomore in, I think, 38 years to win the All-Metro, Star Tribune All-Metro Player of the Year. Pretty remarkable. Chicole is the miss. Van Bergen being hounded there, close to a five count. Oh, nice tip pass. Short ah. jumper is good for Lindsey Johnson. I think, was that Gronowig on the tip pass, that number 30? Yeah, that was just a beautiful tip pass. And here's a turnover. And Johnson hustling over to get a piece of that pass. And like the one we saw a moment ago, it was tipped by the D and then off the offensive yep. player. So the Rangers will get it back. Rangers and Royals, this could be an American League baseball game, too, that we. Van Bergen picks up the dribble way out high, just getting it away before that five count. Double screen for Rice, but way off with that one, and then knocked out of bounds by Hopkins, it looks like. So Forest Lake will get it back. I'll tell you what, Maddie Rice, who we you know, talked about in the pregame, she is a phenomenal ball handler. You see she's got great handle. But I think when you have to handle consistently against that kind of pressure, you forget that you got to be a scorer, too, and you rush your opportunity, and you can tell that shot. She's a very good three-point shooter and just a little bit off trying to rush that. It takes a toll on you when you got to handle the ball against that kind of pressure. Grown away, going to the hoop, no good. Beckers will push it back the other way. Beckers drives all the way, and it oh. comes just short on the left-hand layup. Nice finish with the left hand, just couldn't get quite enough spin on that one to get it to go. Gronowig with it way out high. Seems like the Rangers might be getting a little bit tired. They're making some kind of tired oh. turnovers. There's an offensive foul right there on Gronowig. Well, that's the second or third charge we've seen. And nice job by Raina Suggs coming off of her girl in the help and recognizing And again, jump stop and make the pass there. You would have gotten a shooter a wide open shot. So the offensive foul, so no free throws here. Inbound for Hopkins. You know, too, Jay, you think of Hopkins as, you know, gambling and steals and transition, but they, they play fundamental defense as well. Good positioning, move their feet. And we've seen a number of charges, too. They, they really do play team basketball and team defense. Quick double thrown at Leach there, but then a look for Rice, and that one just barely grazed the rim. They get it back, though, and Rice will shoot up another one, and this yeah. one is good for three, her first bucket. I love the confidence. She just missed two pretty much air balls. It gets it right back, didn't hesitate for a second, popped it again, and hit it. Beckers oh, down that? low. Oh, and unable to finish as Adams. We will get a foul call, though against the Rangers. Actually, they're calling it not a shooting foul, how, but after how, the shot, it looks like. That's a terrible call. How is that not a shooting foul? And why was it called three seconds after the shot? I think he thought that Suggs was going to make it, or whoever I could tell. Adams, him. yeah. Adams. Oh, it. And a push. Yeah, they rule it after she missed that she shoved her in the back, kind of more in the rebounding foot mode there, it looked like. So one and one, and no good on the free throw. Yeah, nice box out that time by Forest Lake as well. Rangers would like to get it down to about 10 before half if possible. They're down 32 to 19. They've had some rough stretches, but at times have played you know, pretty inspired basketball. You could see 
some of the flashes of how they, you know, got to this tournament too. Yep. Drive will not fall there for Van Bergen and Becker's up for the rebound. Drives it down oh. the middle. Ooh, might have gotten away yeah. the travel there. Haltman with the steal. And now Van Bergen for the layup. Yep. It's good. Oh, I think you give Forest Lake a ton of credit, right, Jay? They're fighting. They're not hanging their heads. And, you know, it's very respectable. Yeah, I thought Paige got away with a little shuffle of the feet that time. Chocolas on the pick and yep. roll. Nice finish yep. off the glass here. That was a very contested yep. shot, and she makes it go. Great finish, but a great pass, too, by the eighth grader. Battle on that. Those side pick and rolls are really hard to defend, especially because you can't have help defense because they're, they're so concerned with what's going on on the action on the other side of the floor. Johnson giving it back to Holtman. Ooh. And almost an over and back. Yep. Recovered though by Van Bergen. Minute 25 to go, first half. Hopkins by 13, and going to oh. be an offensive foul against Abby Leach. Well, I think that was Chocolas that stepped in there, and let's see. Yep. Oh, and she was definitely there. Great job again, a help defense. And it was a nice move by Leach, and that's where she just got to come to a jump stop again, Jay, and take that little two foot jump shot. And she might have got carried. Lucky that she wasn't called for a carry there. It looked like she lost control of that ball. Four different Rangers now with two fouls. Nobody has three, but could be something to keep an eye on. There's oh. Becker's a tough shot and turns and looks at the official again. It seemed like could have definitely yeah. been an and one there, but. Yeah. How about that shot? She hung in the air, double pumped, and was able to make it. Beautiful shot. 15-point Hopkins lead, under a minute to play now. Haltman kicking it back out, and no good. Beckers, another rebound. Looks like Hopkins may hold for one here as Suggs. Now work it out top. Under 20 is Beckers. Waiting for the time they want to get into their play here as we go under 10. They spread the floor out and they'll let Beckers go to work. Oh, it's going to be an offensive foul, I believe, on Chocolas. Coming over to try and set a screen and moved into it a little too much. So she will be called for the block. Or excuse me, not Chocolas. It's against uh, Presley. So with 4.8 to go, it will be Forest Lake getting a last opportunity here. Got to be careful that they don't throw, throw themselves into a turnover here either, though. And we will get a double dribble call there against Stumney. And so Hopkins will get it. A possession again, 2.2 seconds to go. Forest Lake wanting to make a couple of quick substitutions, presumably because of the foul situation. No, no need getting a third foul on uh, one of your key girls at this juncture. Inbound to Suggs, turns and shoots, no. And we will reach halftime in this one, Hopkins showing why they're a number two seed. Forest Lake battling back some before Hopkins extended it out a little bit more here late in the uh, first half. So the Royals are gonna take a 15 point lead into halftime of this one as uh, both teams will try and make some adjustments here heading to the half. Let's go over to Ryan now with Coach Wagner. Thanks, Jay. Coach, I thought your girls really competed there in the first half. What did you think of the first half? Well, I mean, we knew what we were going up against. I think everyone in the stands knows who we're playing right now. 
but I'm really proud of the fact that our kids did not show any fear and they did come out and compete and that's what we talked about. We knew what we could control and what we could control was us being able to come in with the fearless mentality, catching and ripping and being aggressive and making sure that our defense was on point and I thought our kids are executing it right now which and, is fun to see. And I thought too you when you attack their pressure you got good looks out of it yeah. throwing it over the top or driving and kicking. Yeah I mean clearly everyone knows that that's like their bread and butter right so if we can try to take them out of that pressure I think our kids then got a little bit too excited because they went to their their half court, which also we repped, which then they, they got a little bit of some bright-eyedness with that. But I was impressed with the way our kids were able to to handle their press, handle their pressure, and be able to come in and just punch back a little bit. Do you have any eligibility left to come help the team out here in the second half? You no, know, I wish I could lace up again, but I mean, I'm a little bit older now, so I'm, I'm not quite sure. I don't want to pull a hammy or anything, but it's fun to watch our kids compete. Well, enjoy. Good luck in the second half. Yeah. Thanks, Coach. All right, back to you, Jay. Thanks, Ryan, and thanks to Coach Wagner. And again, a uh, player that we've known for many years, a uh, former Park Center great coaching at Forest Lake. We will be back with our first half highlights and then our second half of basketball coming up here from the Target Center on CCX Sports. What makes your community feel like home? Is it knowing what's happening in your neighborhood or when people know your name? Connections make us a community. For more than 30 years, Northwest Community Television has connected citizens, neighbors, even sports fans through video. As life gets busier than ever, we will still offer you a connected community experience through CCX Media, so you can stay connected to the place you call home. And welcome back here. Some young Forest Lake fans, their team trailing at 36-21 at halftime here against the number two seed Hopkins. Let's take a look at some first half highlights in this afternoon's game. Forest Lake starting out decent. Abby Leach knocking that one down. That was a long two as it turned out. And then they throw way over the top. Thrown away, dishing it off and Van Bergen getting the layup there for the Rangers. And then a steal here, Suggs whipping it ahead and Beckers will go all the way for the layup for Hopkins. Suggs, good first half as well as she pops the jumper and then gets out in transition and gets one. And not all of the ones that look like they're gonna be easy happen to watch go. this block by Johnson. Beautiful hustle, great hustle. And then the spin cycle, excellent move by Chicola. She's got great footwork. Here's Beckers, and, and we both kind of said, you know, it didn't seem like Beckers probably had her best game, but she still ended up, you know, well, six for nine yeah. from the floor and, and uh, controlling things with four rebounds uh, as well. There's Beckers, and I don't know how that one wasn't yeah. a foul, but. She didn't shoot any free throws in that first half, and she looked right at the referee there, like, how do you, you got to give me that. Gronewig with six, Johnson and Van Bergen, four apiece for Forrest Lake, Beckers and Suggs, a dozen, and Chocolos with six for the Royals. We will come back with more of our telecast here from the Target Center State 4A girls basketball as Hopkins leading Forest Lake 36-21. Welcome back here to the Target Center. Hopkins up by 15. Let's hear from Coach Cosgrove with Ryan. Hey, Coach, what did you think of the first half? I thought we were real slow on our defensive rotations. I just think we gave up too many easy baskets, gave them some second opportunities. We've got to do a lot better job in the second half. Still up 15. What are you wanting to see here in the second half? What would make you happy? Quicker defensive rotations. Uh, we need to pass the ball on our fast break. We're holding on to it too long. You know, we, we got a lot of work ahead of us. Thanks for the time. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. All right, you bet. Back to you, Jay. 
Thanks, Ryan, and thanks, Coach Kaz, and uh, both guys battling the band right behind him there. So uh, uh, never satisfied. That's, that's part of the Hopkins mantra there for really their girls and boys programs is that, you know, they're not, they're not coming here to, to uh, you know, just win the game. I mean, they're looking for perfection, and they had some things that they felt they needed to work on too. Big story, I think, in the first half too, 17 turnovers for Forest Lake, and obviously that did not help their cause overall. Uh, they did not shoot the ball especially well. 38% from the floor where Hopkins was at 52%. And uh, the Rangers did out-rebound Hopkins 18 to 10. And there were some second chance, you know, buckets there as for, uh, for Forest Lake. So see what uh, the Rangers can do to begin this second half against Beckers and crew here. I think both teams, uh, a lot of charges taken in that first half, so you want to get things a little bit better in that regard. As Ryan talked about, you know, coming to a jump stop or angling yourself a little bit better to, to not just run over the defender. Hammond will inbound here, and we are underway in half two as she gets it to battle. Jacolas coming to the high post. Little pin down here for Suggs, turns, fires, and scores. Boy, Hopkins couldn't have asked for anything better. Draw, drawing up a nice play out of that uh, halftime break. They get the quick two. Royals picking up at half court here. Rice drives and dishes. Gronewig shot won't go, but it's out of bounds off Hopkins. Just didn't get the hands up quick enough there, trying to block out, and it bounces away. And the Rangers will get the ball back. Johnson triggers it in. And a quick shot there is short by Leach. Kind of a force there, I think. Beckers looks left and Suggs the floater no good. Jacolas missed. And then Battle was fouled as she tried to put up the third try for the Royals. And she will head to the free throw line. That'll be on Van Bergen. Her first so battle will go to the free throw line. A couple of buckets in that first half for her. Free throw is good. One more coming here for battle, and second one also good. So the Royals start off with a bucket and then a couple of free throws to begin half two. They go up 40 to 21. And not letting up either on the pressure. We thought Coach Cosgrave was not in a good mood there at half. He felt like his team should have been quicker, sharper. So I expect him to come out with great energy here to start the second half. Drive to the hoop. Oh, a nice move, but just couldn't finish. Gronewig. Now battle. Coming back the other way, and oh. the layup is good. She's got those long strides and long arms, too. And Man, she's going to be <laughs> phenomenal as well. Already phenomenal as an eighth grader. As she gets stronger and more confident, she's just going to get better and better. Well, and I think it's a nice thing, too. It was kind of like Becker's a couple years ago. You can... You know, ease Slowly a player into their yeah. program yeah. You're not, where they're, they're not counted the on. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they can kind of play without that pressure and also being on a winning team, right? So it, they're learning good habits. They're learning, you know, from the older gals as well. But just a nice crossover. And look at her extend on those steps and then finish with the offhand as well. She's been very impressive. She's got eight points. Number two, foul number two on Suggs there as she bumped the dribbler. Nice pass. Back up, Johnson kicks it around to Gronewig and she traveled, there's Hopkins. A yep. Little bit of rotation yep. that coach had talked yep. about in the first half. There's just nowhere to go, there's no weakness. There's, you drive baseline, great help. You kick it out, what should have been an open shot got closed down and you end up rushing, you force a turnover. Great defense that time by Hopkins. You know, and that's again, 17 turnovers in the first half for Forest Lake. And an illegal screen call, it looks like, against Hammond. And that will be number three on Hammond. So early in the second half, she picks up her third. 
Inbound to Rice. And going to be an offensive foul awarding off with the off arm there. And that'll that be her arm. third yeah. down. Yep. And I think a good acting job as well by Paige Becker. <laughs> She's a pretty strong girl falling over. But again, anytime the referee sees that left hand extended, it's a very easy call to make. Yeah, it was more than I thought when we saw that replay. I think she got her with the elbow a little bit, too, in the ribs. Jacolas is fouled there as she grabbed that offensive rebound. Yeah, Becker is a little frustrated. That was a heck of a crossover and a nice scoop. Great players, they keep the ball up high as they go through two defenders and just a little bit short. I think she's frustrated, and Coach Cosgriff bringing, him, bringing her over and just telling her to keep her head up, keep attacking. I think that was one of the rare instances of some of a page being a little indecisive there. She kind of like she almost changed her mind what shot if she wanted be left to hand use. Or yeah. then she ended up using the right hand finger roll and didn't get enough on it. Yep, you're right. She's very usually very sure-handed. Very you know makes the the right decision as well. Nicola's second free throw drops. It's a 43-21 lead. Forrest Lake gonna throw that long home run pass again. Gronowig lost the ball on the way up and out of bounds, it'll be Hopkins' ball. And if Forest Lake was hoping to, you know, make a little surge to start the second half, it's gone the opposite way. Yep, haven't scored here, not how you want to start against Hopkins. And Battle, driving, nice. got it through. through with the, <laughs> yeah, there didn't look like any room at all. And Chocolas gets the layup. She did a nice job, too, of getting herself yeah. in position to be say, open. Yep, used that body and set up. So all she had to do was catch and score. But, man, there was just not a whole lot of room. But a great pass. And, again, that was a great example. I thought, you know, she could have had a layup on that as well. Instead, found her teammate, gave up a good shot for a great shot. I think battle is going to be a really fun one to watch as, as well. So 45-21, if uh, Coach Cosgriff let his team know that they had better in them at halftime, it seems like they've listened as they come out to start the second half on a 9-0 run and have really opened this one up. Yeah, and you look, too, just in the field goal percentage for the opposing team, 34% for, for the Rangers, 2 for 9 for 3, and just not getting enough, enough shots off, and a lot of that's because of the turnovers. I bet we're up to over 20 total turnovers now for... Forest Lake and I like the timeout called right there just settling your team down and listen you're probably honest like we might not win this game we probably aren't going to win this game but we can still get better we can still build we got a lot of young players let's build on good habits good momentum as we go into the offseason well and there's a consolation bracket this year as well isn't there I believe in the state tournament That's what uh, that's what I had read. Gronewig, yeah, there is. Uh, they did bring that back. I think yeah. it was last year. So you do get to play again, yep. although not back here at Target Center. There's Hammond with a nice block. Didn't worry about having three fouls. However, Becker's then lost it to Gronewig. Oh, nice catch! Johnson then throws it over Gronewig's head. Here comes Chicola's pushing it ahead to Suggs. Suggs between two players and was fouled. See if they'll call this a shooting foul or not. There's another look yeah. at the nice block by Hammond. You know, that's a great offensive move. That's just a great athlete recovering there. And Paige Beckers loses the ball, but still the length of Hopkins able to prevent that from turning into a layup. And off the other way we go. And Raina Suggs so good in that transition, isn't she? She's so quick and kind of slides around defenders and knows how to draw contact. And, of course, a very good free throw shooter as well. Foul win against Leach. Suggs second free throw perfect as well. 16 points for her now and the Royals lead continues to grow at 47-21. Johnson's pass stolen by Chicolas. Gets oh, the nice return kid, there no. from Suggs and had her shot partially blocked. Beckers though takes it right back oh. over to Chicolas for the layup. <laughs> That's just great effort by, by Hopkins on that play. And a beautiful pass by Beckers. And again, showing how unselfish she is. She struggled scoring the basketball, could have gotten a layup. Instead, gave up a great pass for a teammate. There's a steal by Hammond back to Suggs. And they'll bring it out top and reset. 
Hammond open on the baseline, short with that one though. Holtman throwing it ahead to Johnson, layup is good. Well, tell you, Johnson's been impressive too. She's the one that's got that big block in the first half and she's been very impressive. She's got six points and a couple of rebounds, a couple of assists and played very, very hard. Hammond cut off there, gets it out to battle. Becker's driving and no good as she hits the deck. Johnson throwing ahead to Gronaway, gets off her hands and has to save it. And Johnson gets there first. Nice pass. Holtman from the baseline, that's good. Beautiful pass by Johnson and Holtman knocks down the shot. I just like the energy and the life still with Forest Lake. They're not hanging their head, they don't feel sorry. They're coming with great effort. Johnson's a good athlete. Yep. Run, runs the floor hard and had that yep. great shot block earlier as well. And she's been you know, tasked to guard Paige Beckers and really done a pretty good job. Beckers hasn't gotten a lot of easy things tonight. Hammond in the post here will swing it to Suggs. Her jumper oh. is perfect. Three pointer for Raina Suggs. That was shot right in front of us. You can tell right as she left, it left her hand. That was nothing but the bottom of the net. Holtman into the front court. 16 to four, Jay, in the second half. Hopkins on a nice run here to open up the second half. Look at the defense, there's nowhere to go, no one open. Yeah, just making yeah. each pass right now is a struggle. Difficult. Yep, yep. There's Hammond poking it away, Holtman gets it back. Drives to the hoop, no good. Knocked out of bounds by Hammond, it will be Forest Lake ball. Yeah, nice kick out, Raina Suggs, she gets squared up, excellent three-point shooter, and she buries it. See the bench excited. Tanberg has come back in, number 21 for Forest Lake. Rice taking the handoff, they've done a really good job keeping her in check, she has just three points in that first half, averaged nearly 12. Dumping it down low, Gronewig, nice, oh, nice recovery pass. over to Johnson, then denied by Hammond. And it will stay with Forest Lake. It just, everything, like you said, there's just no open avenue. Great recovery and a beautiful pass right there, good cut. Johnson gets a good look and then, oh, you got huge length in Hammond coming over, contesting and getting a block. And there's Rice knocking yep. down a three off the inbound as she sees one of her few Open, yep. clean looks at the basket today. And she didn't hesitate either, got a good look and just buried it, got her legs involved. Becker's kicking it oh. over and the three is good by battle. Every time Forest Lake thinks they have, you know, a little sliver of something going, Hopkins yep. comes right back. One again, Becker's is just so good off the dribble that the defense collapses any chance they can and she's got great vision and she finds battles. Really had a nice game. That puts her in double figures. She's got 11. And a reach in here. Hammond trying to tie up the ball, but instead got more arm, and that'll be her fourth foul. It's it's fun to watch from courtside here, Ryan, because we can see when Beckers is dribbling how much her head is always up. Yep. And, and that's what great players do. They're not worried about their matchup. They know they can beat their defender. It's that second, third level. If I go here, what's the help going to do? Who's going to be open? You know, and the great players see a player two ahead. Nice cut. And there'll be a foul underneath. As flashing free there was Gronawig and Kira Mosley fouls her. I like Gronawig too. I like how she plays. She's gonna be back next year. So to your point earlier in the broadcast, Jay, Forest Lake's got a bright future. They got a lot of young players. And you know, of course too with, with is it Stumney? I always forget how it's Stumney. Yep. Coming back, she'll be a, little, a year healthier and better shape and more confident. I, I, I could see them being a very formidable team for the next year or two. Gronowig's free throw is good. And, and, and for fans watching this, they might look and say, well, you know, you're talking to Forrest Lake. How many teams, though, have we seen over the years that when they play Hopkins, they don't <laughs> look especially yeah. good just because of the pressure they're up against? I mean, they're even, even some of the better teams in our area Yep. Sometimes have gotten thumped pretty good by this Hopkins team. A couple yeah, of years ago, Park Center yep. got into the tournament, played them in the first round, and you know they held their own. But 
It's a tough matchup. Becker's shot won't go. Tip loose and it comes out to Rice. Oh, nice luck, nice pass, good extra pass. Stumney will shoot, it looks straight but just short. Mosley looking for Becker's cutting, turns and was fouled. Stumney will pick up the foul and Paige Beckers will head to the free throw line here for the Royals. Well, I, I do like how Forest Lake has played defense against Paige Beckers. They, nothing has been easy. Some of her baskets have come in transition where you really can't do anything about that. But in the half court, they have contested her. They've made her work. They frustrated her. And the problem is that they have so much other weapons that you have to account for. And that's, that's what makes them different than most teams. You, you know, Lakeville North, we saw a phenomenal performance in the first first game tonight, but if she doesn't score 31 points, they don't win, right? Whereas Hopkins, you feel like they can get away with Beckers maybe having a B or B minus game because they have so much other talent as well. Beckers makes a pair here, 57-30 Royals. And with that being said, she's still got 14 points already. Suggs jumps in the passing lane for the steal. Not gonna get this one blocked and no. she lays it in. Yeah, she's fun to watch too. So much speed and quickness and good shooter. I mean, they just, they can come at you from all different directions. Well, as you said earlier, a good point that Hopkins gets a lot of steals, but it isn't because they're just playing, you know, wild gambling Reckless, defense. Yeah. They just, yeah. they see opportunities yeah. out of their good, you know, good uh, defensive oh, principles. Look, look at that look. Beckers Beautiful ahead, pass. layup yeah. good for Presley. Give Presley credit running hard, but again, Paige Beckers, that head is up. She is always looking in beautiful pass as she led Presley right in for a layup. No, and you know what else? When you get steals, you know what it starts with a lot of times is ball pressure, Jay. Because you, you ball pressure, you end up rushing it. You, you're not seeing everything clearly because you're worried about the person guarding you, and ball pressure can lead to turnovers. And that's what they do such a good job. Every single one of their defenders pressures the ball. Oh. Beckers went for the steal there. It's gonna be last touch by Beckers. Yep, there's Raina Suggs playing the passing lane and you ain't gonna catch her very often. And here's that bullet pass. Great job by Beckers and Presley running the floor extremely hard, gets an easy layup. Inbounded to Holtman. And we have an official's timeout because uh, Maya Tanberg kind of blew a tire over there. Her <laughs> shoe was uh, like halfway off. That was, makes me think of Herschel Walker's first <laughs> debut game with the Vikings. Remember that kickoff and his shoe came loose and he kept running with it out, without it on? Well, for a week it felt like the greatest trade in Vikings history and turned into probably the worst trade in Vikings history. For a week it seemed like that and then for years it seemed like the worst trade and maybe the best trade ever for Dallas. <laughs> Chikolas with a nice drive to the hoop there and finishes it strong and Hopkins has yeah. really put this one away early. They're up by 33. That puts her in double figures as well. She's got 13 now. Kayla Adams will be called for the blocking foul there for the Royals. At 27 to nine in the second half, so Hopkins really pouring it on. You know, Coach Cosgriff is gonna find something to be, you know, always trying to get his team to that next level, but he's gotta be very impressed with their Defensive reaction and quickness and rotations here in the second half. Nice step through, good fake. Oh, and the yeah. up and under move there. An old, yeah. old school action from Van Bergen. Oh, what a play. <laughs> that was an unbelievable play by Presley. That ball was going out of bounds. It was gonna be off Hopkins. Presley with her left hand. Watch this, Jay. Great step through move, but watch this effort at the end here by Presley. It's going out of bounds, throws it off the Forest Lake player. I mean, that's just beautiful effort. You'd think maybe the game was tied at this point with that kind of effort. There's that side pick and roll. Unbelievable. Hard to guard, great pass. 
Kekolis with the strong finish, and she'll get a free throw as well. And more smiles from Hopkins here in the second half as they have gotten it all going. Yeah, she uses her body so well. It's got great strength. And I swear, I mean, that play is very, very hard to defend at any level. That side ball screen, especially if you have a player that can come off and shoot because you got to show. And if you switch it, that, that roller is always available. Chocolis knows how to finish as well as anybody. That was the fourth foul, too, by the way, on that Gronawig. And free throw is good. So Chocolis able to complete the three-point play. Hopkins up 66-30. to 30. Nice driving kick. Johnson floating across the middle will swing it over and a step back oh, three nice. is good there yeah. for Leach. Good defense, but that was great offense. You got a couple of driving kicks. And again, Hopkins doing a great job of helping. Kick it over and Leach buries a three. And she's been impressive as well. I, I like how she plays only a junior as well, so she's gonna be back. And what great experience, even if you lose this game, you got to play at target center. You got some of your young players, some great experience. You're playing against a really good team. Nice backdoor cut by Suggs. The flow just wasn't quite there for Hopkins in the first half. It certainly has been in the second, and there's another turnover by the Rangers. Rice will come back into the Forest Lake lineup. So Suggs will work it into the front court. There's that side pick and roll again. Defended much better that time by Forest Lake. Floater on the baseline. Wow. <laughs> Somehow Suggs found yeah. room to get that one up there. Well remember she's got that left hand too so she had a good aim. A nice angle on that side and it's hard to defend lefties. You're just not used to it. Rangers wanted a foul call, didn't get it. Suggs throwing it ahead. And the layup is good for Kayla Adams as she gets her first basket of the game. Johnson between a couple of defenders. And Van Bergen will line it up and hit a three. Force Lake doing a better job penetrating and kicking and finding, oh, it out of, I think it was out of bounds, maybe crossed the line there on Chocolas, but Force Lake driving, kicking, and hitting a couple of nice three-pointers here. And beautiful job by Johnson, getting into the heart of that over to Van Bergen, and she buries it. So starting to shoot the ball a little bit better from the outside, Forest Lake is. We are into running time with this margin, so the clock is continuing to run. I wasn't sure if in the state tournament, but I think that might, if uh, they were still gonna go to the running time, but it is, the clock did continue to tick there after that last stoppage. Gonna get a foul call against Adams, getting into the body of the dribbler a little bit too much. Rice brings it back out top. Johnson a strong oh, nice drive, ball. wouldn't drop though. Okay, yeah, she is a good athlete. She's got a quick first step and use both hands. Oh my, yeah. huge collision. Wow. That's gonna be called an offensive foul against Taylor Woodson of Hopkins and three players went down, two got up, but one did not as Leach is injured. Another look there. They went yeah. like bowling pins. Yeah, and I think what happened too is Gronaway landed on her teammate, on Leach. You see, they're looking at her head. When she was falling, because I didn't see her get hit in the face, so I think it was on the fall. And that's certainly, you hate to see that. Yeah, see, great job with our camera people as always. There's a good contact, but right there on the fall, 
I don't know if she hit her head on the floor or if it was her, her teammate that landed on her. Trainers out to uh, tend to her and also Coach Wagner. And yeah, right there, you don't see anything. I think it's right there. Yeah, I the think end. it's more yeah. her teammate Grown falling on there. I think you're right. Yep. She kind of did a good job of bracing herself so that her head, yep. you know, didn't it didn't appear well, to hit the floor hard initially. But the two things you worry about: one was our blow to the head, to the face, which there wasn't. And then a lot of times when you fall back, sometimes you bang your head on the on the back of your head. Yeah. And I didn't see either of those. I think it was just the the weight of her teammate falling on her and. and Great to see her sitting up, but that's, you, you know, any head injury like that you always worry about. And hate to see it. Of course, they're being cautious, yep. too, to... Yeah, we'll take a quick time out here as they uh, t as they tend to the injured player. We will be back to Target Center here in just a moment on CCX Sports. Fancy pants peanut butter? A big screen television? You haven't even bought a sofa yet. A motorcycle? When your father finds out, he's going to flip his shoes with two buckles? What do you even need two buckles for? Mr. Big Shot, buying whiskey shots for everybody in the bar. From the looks of it, I'd say nobody even remembers. Feed the pig. And Abby Leach. Walking off slowly, and let's hope she's all right here for Forest Lake. Uh, I think it's safe to say we won't see her anymore today, but hopefully she'll be able to come back and play in the consolation. A little hard to hard to watch that for any uh, young athlete uh, getting hurt and like yep. this in this game. So kind of everybody kind of breathing a sigh of relief yep. at least when she got up. I'll tell you what, she should be very proud of how she played. She took a number of charges, hit a couple of big shots, played hard, very, very good basketball player. Rice over to Johnson, wouldn't go on the jumper. Rice, though, gets the rebound. Looked inside and up a little too tall there on the pass as they try to go to Catherine Taylor, who's in there now, number 35. Hopkins, a couple more subs in two. Andrea Gray, number 21, bringing the ball up court. Baseline drive, and it is good. Nice finish there by Adams for her second bucket. Yeah. Is she explosive, too? My gosh, she just exploded on the baseline. Did not have a very good angle, too. Still somehow got that shot up on the rim and got it to fall. Mayanagi, number 30, is in for the Royals as well here. Drive to the middle, and... Near travel there. Now Rice going to shoot up a long one. Bounces twice off the rim, no good. And out of there with it is Gray. And the Royals will turn it over here. Well, unfortunate too, because if Taylor Woodson's able to catch that, she gets the pretty uncontested path to the rim for another transition layup. And both teams will make some wholesale changes here, looks like. Imani Jones, number 12, is in for Hopkins, along with Samaya Buchanan, 35. 43 is Tony Cody. Number four is Elena Contreras. And let's see, number 40, Suzanne Patterson. Rice popping free at the top, no good. Nice job to get to that board by Patterson, or excuse me, uh, Contreras. Uh, two and a half to go. Hopkins dominating, especially in the second half, leading at 74 36.
And we will get a foul call there on Gronenweg, and that is going to be her fifth. She tried to steal that pass, but it was late getting there and got all arm. So Gronenweg will foul out with eight points for the Rangers. Coming in for Hopkins, Sarah Cosberg, number 15. So Contreras will try and get her name in the score column here. Free throw off target. More subs for the Rangers. Anna Riefschneider, number three, is in there as they turn it over. Number 10, Lexi Gokin. And Hopkins with Rachel Jagger coming in number 42 as we tick down toward a minute. Actually, the clock is not, no, one of the clocks up high wasn't moving there for a minute. Missed on the steal attempt. Shot won't drop. Good hustle by Taylor to get to that ball, but we will get a foul call. And we will head to the other end here for free throws perhaps, although it's possible the timeout run out before we even get a chance to do it. And Coach Wagner's gonna use a timeout, I think strictly to get those last yep. players in there. Yep, and that's great. Great for both teams. You go if you can get everyone a chance to play at the target center, it's a it's a memory they're gonna remember the rest of their lives. Hey, I remember when we got to play where the Timberwolves do, it's a great experience and I like to see both coaches giving everyone a chance to get into the game. Lydia Bostrom, number 31, is in. Allison Olson, 22 for the Rangers. Number five, Bailey Hansen. And I believe that's Meg Lesh, number 33, is in too. Free throw, no good. Jones gets the return pass here for Hopkins. And that one gets away on the steal for Allison Olson. Olson oh, shoots nice it up shot. and scores, plus a foul. Well, she'll remember that one. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be a lopsided loss, but they will uh, have one memory there yeah. for the sophomore. Olson finishing nicely here. Oh, she, I don't even think she was looking when she, she shot that one. Wow, that's a heck of a shot. She's smiling a little bit. <laughs> she got a little laugh out of that yeah, one. That was great. Olsen wide right on the free throw. They'll get another try though. Shot doesn't go. Tipped around a little bit. Royals come up with it. And that is going to do it for our ball game. So Hopkins, a convincing victory here. And the Royals are going to win it. So Hopkins moves into the semifinals here and uh, showing why they're one of the favorites, yeah. I guess co-favorite or, or second favorite to Eastview maybe. They did lose to Eastview during the season, so. Yeah. But, but uh, without you know. Paige Becker's in that lineup, the last by 10. So, and don't forget Eastview I think has a really good matchup tomorrow with Lakeville North. So I think Lakeville North, is very good. That could be a heck of a game. I, I like Hopkins' path to get to the championship game, being Creighton, Durham Hall, or Roseville, the winner of that game. So, but uh, I think when when Hopkins is playing and firing on all cylinders, and Paige Becker is in the lineup and healthy, I'm not betting against him. That's all I know. So that'll do it for our broadcast here from the Target Center and our final girls basketball broadcast of the year. And uh, tune in for the semis and finals on uh, Channel 45, of course. And we've got a little bit more boys hoops action to go here with some section finals and then early into the state tournament next week. Hope you've enjoyed this one. For Ryan Iverson and all of our crew, MJ Wilcox, final score, Royals 74, Rangers 38.